You've seen how to create formulas using letter and number cell addresses, B2 plus B3 and so on. With Excel, you can also create formulas using row and column labels. For example, this summer we had a special promotion during June and July to get groups of people to come to our show. We won a formula on our worksheet that shows the group ticket sales for June and July. We select the cell where we want the formula to go. We want the formula to add these two cells. We could use their cell addresses, but instead we'll use the row and column labels. We type an equal sign to start the formula. Then we type June group plus July group. Then we press enter. The formula is created and the result is displayed. Notice that Excel changed the capitalization to match the labels. Next to the formula, we type the label promotion. And since we want to move to the cell below, instead of pressing enter, we press the down arrow key. The formula we just created, which Microsoft calls a natural language formula, is often easier to create and easier for others to understand. We'll create another one in a minute, but first, we'll show you a shortcut for entering labels. We want to type a label that says full percentage. When we type the F, the rest of the word full displays in the cell. If we start typing some text that matches an entry in that column, Excel's autocomplete feature fills in the rest. We can just press Enter to complete it. Then to finish this label, we press the F2 key to edit the cell contents. Type what we want to add, and then press Enter. We use the right arrow key to move to our next cell. Now we'll create a formula that shows what percentage full price tickets were for each month's sales. We'll create a natural language formula, and this time it will be even easier. The formula in the June column will be the June full amount divided by the June month amount. Since they're all in the same column, we don't even need the column name. We type the equal sign and then full divided by month. When we press enter, the result is shown. It's a little more than 74% shown as a decimal. We'll format this as a percentage in the next topic. Now we'll copy this June formula to the other months, and this time we'll copy with the keyboard. For quick keyboard editing, we can cut with Control X, copy with Control C, and paste with Control V. The formula is selected, so we copy it with Control C. Then we select the next cell. We extend our selection by holding down the Shift key moving as far as we need to and then releasing the shift key. Then we paste with control V. The formula is copied. Notice that the marquee is still on, showing that we could paste this formula somewhere else if we wanted to. Typing or editing data will turn off the marquee or we can just press the escape key. Using label names in formulas makes them easier to read and makes cell addresses easier to remember. Another way to use names in a formula, which is especially useful when we're working with a range of cells, is to use range names. We'll create a range name for the monthly total cells in the Summer Sales Worksheet. We'll name it Summer. Then we'll use the range name in a couple of formulas. First, we select the range of cells we want to name, the monthly totals. To name the range, we'll use the name box on the formula bar. We click in the name box and type the name Summer. Then we press enter. Our range is now named. Now we'll use the name in a formula that will sum the monthly totals. We select the cell where we want the formula to appear and type an equal sign. We type the sum function name. Then we type a left parenthesis, the range name, and a right parenthesis. The parentheses display in bold for a moment, showing that they are a matched set. We press enter. The sum of the cells in the named range is displayed. Now we'll use the range name to figure the average of our summer monthly sales totals using another function, the average function. First, we'll type a label for the average. We select the label cell and type average. We press the right arrow key to enter the label and move to the results cell. We type an equal sign and the function name, average then a left parenthesis. If you use range names a lot, it's often helpful to see a list of them to make sure you insert the range name you want. 
We open the Insert menu and select Name. Since we're in the middle of creating a formula, the only range name command that's available is Paste. We select it, and the Paste Name dialog box opens. We double-click on the range name we want, and it's pasted into our formula. Now watch what happens if we make a common mistake, forgetting to type the right parenthesis. When we press Enter, Excel's Formula Autocorrect feature fixes our mistake and completes the formula. The average is displayed. If the mistake is obvious, like that one, Autocorrect will just fix it. Otherwise, Autocorrect will suggest a correction and let you decide what to do. Our worksheet now shows the data we want, but it's a little too crowded. We'll move the promotion and average information down a few rows. We select those cells. We could use the cut and paste features, but there's an easier way. We point to the selection border, with the mouse pointer displaying as an arrow. We click and hold with the mouse, and then drag the selection to where we want it. A fuzzy outline shows where the selection will go, and a screen tip shows the range address. When the selection is where we want it, we release the mouse button. Our row spacing is better now. This method of moving selections is called drag and drop. You can also copy with drag and drop. Friends, Romans, countrymen, Jim. lend me your ear. Jim, Jim. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. Jim. The evil that men do. Jim, 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 Jim. Yeah. Later. Okay, sure. What were we doing? Oh, we were going to copy with drag and drop. You know, there are some people I'd like to drag and drop. We want to copy the full percentage formula to the total column. We select it, point to the border, and then hold the control key. The pointer displays with a plus sign to show that we're copying. We drag to the new location, release the mouse button, and then release the control key. The formula is copied. Using labels and range names can help you to create formulas. And here's a tip. Range names can even help you move around the worksheet. Clicking on the drop-down arrow in the name box will display a list of range names. Clicking on a name will move you right to that range. 